with the movies he's made. He, he landed in Miami, we picked him up, we took him straight on the set. At lunch, the producer rang him from The Hobbit and said, you know, how are you getting on? You know, did you get into Miami okay? He went, yeah, yeah, really good. What are you up to? And he said, uh, I've been getting a hand job on a ledger. And uh, that was his first day's work. So, you know, it's, it's tough at the top. Oh, Graham McTavish, um, total gentleman. I've never enjoyed somebody's company so much. It's just every time he opens his mouth, he's got a great story. He is a master with doing these crazy accents. So you hear him in, in real life and he, he sounds all proper and like a gentleman and then all of a sudden he'll become this redneck hick. Excuse me sir, uh, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You're not wearing the right attire. You need to put your bikini on. I've got one underneath there. here sir. It's a small fog. Small fog? Hang on. It's not. It I can see it. It's see through it it separates and you got a nice pink shirt on though. She looks like that. And literally I have to just try to put on the straight face for when we start filming because he just has me cracking up. He is definitely a character. Graham is a really, really talented actor. He could play anything. I, I've got to, got to write him something else. I, 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 I would do anything to work with Graham again. I really would. Well, naturally with my accent, uh, I, I'm asked quite a couple times to play the bad guys, you know. Marcel is a gangster. Our little uh, quadro here, uh, while they're on their stealing tour, they steal from the wrong guy, which is my character, and, uh, <clears throat> and they're going to get punished for that. He really does sort of scare the shit out of you. Um, one of the memorable scenes in the film for me is when he smashes the tablet over Harry the accountant's head. Very unexpected. It's got a sort of uh, quality of Don Logan out of um, Sexy Beast, the way he just suddenly erupts. I'm here because I really love the script and um, the dialogue writing is exceptional. It's um, the speeches, they have a kind of uh, Tarantino-ish quality, I thought, you know. I like the sarcasm and the, um, and the easiness, the easy flow. I guess you guys here in England have a kind of tradition of these little dirty gangster movies. Um, it's very un-Hollywoody and I've been really drawn to that and I, I had fun doing that. Very nice. Cut there. Cut there. One more. Um, on, on Peter's camera, yep. the moment the door starts to open, rack straight away to Thomas Gretschmann. He's got to be in focus the moment he's, the door's open. Julian is a man unto, a, a kind of, a law unto himself. He's a high energy, no nonsense kind of. It's nice to have someone who knows exactly what he wants and doggedly goes about getting it. I'm gonna get that fucker behind there. I'm gonna get that fucker behind there, otherwise nothing will make sense to you. And I think everyone's really enjoyed working with him and, and certainly been entertained by him as well. Julian is this wonderful combination of an enthusiast, a funny man, and also visually amazing, and he really knows what he's doing. Julian makes me laugh so much. <laughs> he, he comes out with the funniest comments. Yes, on the sexual action. Yeah, big rock and roll. Just smash the hell out of that dummy. It's Valentine's Day after all. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Julian's just a fantastically enthusiastic guy and infects everybody on set with that. Same enthusiasm. Boom! Right, here's me first. Right. Oh, crunch down. down. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And he's a, he's an enormous personality. <laughs> All right, listen, you can't do that thing out. Can't go back and watch television. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's telling. <laughs> There's never a dull moment, really, and never a negative moment. It's just been the most fun experience. It just creates a really sort of fun environment on set. It never gets too serious, and actually when it needs to be serious, um, it is, and he, he gives you the kind of time and space to do that. I mean, you know, we're doing a long night shoot tonight, and, uh, you know, he never flags, he never gets tired, he never loses his sense of humour, and, and it's great. It's been a real pleasure, actually, working with him. This film is set in London and Miami, and that's exactly where we're filming. You know, it was obviously great being in Miami, 
fucking weirdest place in the world. It's like Los Angeles on too much cocaine in the 80s, you know? And I like that a lot, that was funny. I've never been to Miami and it's beautiful. Beautiful weather. Photographically as well, you just can't beat it. It's the light there is so interesting and different to hear. All these crazy Miami colors just jumping out at you, like turquoise blue seas, all these crazy shirts that we wear. Great vibe, really relaxed. We were shooting on South Beach and the paparazzi just descended on us. I've never seen anything like it. Some dude was shouting, I'm from New York and I'm gonna kick you on your ass. And like someone shouted, I'm from Peckham, I'm gonna kick you on yours. I will never forget until the day I die just directing the guys sprinting down Ocean Drive. I mean, it was amazing to film in Miami. It was amazing to close off between 7th and 8th on Ocean Drive. Well, close it off as much as one can. It was, you know, an amazing experience. I think Emma was in the sea at some point and um, obviously she does this great kind of bond moment where she wanders out of the sea. I think it was one of the ADs, is there a shark out there? <laughs> and so everyone just goes, shh, you could see this kind of fin and there's Emma Rigby in the water. I think one of the sparks said, no, no, that's just kind of like a non-biting kind of basking shark. But it was kind of a, let, let, let's not upset the actress and don't mention the shark, you know, just get on with the shark. There was lots of super, super hot um, supporting artists in Miami, so I'm sure they're worth looking at. I think we spent two weeks in Miami together, then Watford, so peaks and troughs. It's been a very challenging job because it's a very ambitious project for the amount of resource and money we have. We've had to do everything from the inside of a 747 to creating a American Express type international accounts office to domestic interiors. We're even recreating elements of Miami here in the UK, so we're doing American offices here. We're even doing an office that's set in Brunei. There's been a lot of sets and some of the sets are just being shot on for a day and obviously they take you maybe four or five to get days ready, then you've got to move on, so it's a very frenetic pace. The set we're in at the moment probably was the most complicated set. It's the finale of the film and technically quite difficult because there was a lot of special effects and armory. When the film comes around to the shootout, we were quite adamant that the rip-off of the jewels from Anna de Blam, Jewelers, that was never going to be the crux of the film. That was never so, that was a precursor to the real robbery, which is Yatesy robbing his best friends, going off, getting them into a world of trouble because they're in debt to a very dangerous character. And then that it all kicks off from there. You know, ultimately, where, where does one do a deal in the middle of the city? It will always come back to a nice, beautiful hotel room. Obviously, you need to visually give the energy of a major gunfight. Made particularly difficult because we're in quite an ornate period building which we're not really allowed to damage, so we had to be very clever about uh, how we dealt with that. So, that was dealt with by putting in flyable breakaway passable panels and sugar glass elements and paintings on the walls that we own which can be squibbed and plaster bust like the one behind me which we can pre rig. So we can give the impression of a lot of destruction in a space uh, without actually damaging the integrity of the building. Huh, yeah, the shootout. Well, you know, I've, I've, I've filmed enough of them. I, it was, uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Three, two, one, action! <laughs> Theon, one. Terry. when squibs hurt somebody, I think, I can't remember. Three, Three two, one, action! <laughs> and cut it there! You motherfucker, you know how much that hurts? <laughs> Is that all you? Oh yeah, it hurt me! <laughs> Wow. Hopefully there's, there's some good set pieces coming along. Three, two, one, action. I'm very 
proud of this guy. He's fantastic. He's one of the best stuntmen out there. We've been able to go in and push the boundaries in terms of in terms of you know, pushing the budget to its absolute maximum. You know, getting like great sort of aerial shots in Miami, just some great car work stuff. Well, let's see, we're doing our big finale car crash of the film. This is Yacy's car back behind me here. Marcel's car is going to come here on a, a tow line coming at something like 40 miles an hour. Impact the car here, do a, a flip with an air ram over the top, come to a crash stop somewhere in this area over here. Um, the key thing with this stunt is we've only got one go at this, so we've got four cameras on it. Uh, all the preparations are coming into place, we should be ready to shoot in about 15 minutes. Yeah, Rise of the Foot Soldier was one of our favourite films that we worked on together and um, that really was a cautionary tale on, you know, you don't really want to go down that road because that could happen to you, it could be you as a Range Rover. And I think with this it's, it's a similar sort of thing really, you know, um, you might be tempted to do things that you shouldn't do, but that, that's what could happen, you know, so I, I think it's definitely, uh, um, hopefully it'll make them all leave the cinema wanting to be law-abiding citizens. Also it seems to me to have some sort of moral backbone to it somewhere deep down in Julian and William's um, creation. There's, there's um, not a major lesson behind it, just uh, maybe don't steal from the wrong guys, or don't steal at all.